Hey YouTube, this is a 1987, I think, made in Japan, Aria Pro 2 Diamond Series. I don't know if you can read that in below, it says Rock Device. But yes, so that was kind of why I bought it. I've actually got a Rock Device guitar as well, which isn't quite as mad as this because it doesn't have two P-Bass pickups in it. I didn't do this. Um, this is a stock item. Um, but look at it, it's mental. Eh? So it's basically a sort of super P-Bass. Like the way a Super Strat's a Super Strat, which is obviously all the rage in about 1987. So pointy head. It's got a really thin turbo neck on it. Uh, paint, a painted neck. Bolt on. Um, serial number starts with a K. K026100, made in Japan. I don't know what that signifies. I mean, I know Aria Pro were Matsumoku built. I don't know if that serial number fits in with a Matsumoku guitar. Uh, the, there is a page of a catalogue in this not in a catalogue like a, a a magazine advert that's got this in it but it's all in japanese so i don't really know what it says there is there's a, a version that's just got like a normal pickup in it it's just a normal p-based pickup i don't know if it's a pj or whether it's a um you know two jazz pickups or just a p in its own but there was definitely a sort of more normal one this was the mad looking one um i believe it might be called a jpj3 or something like that the reason i looked it out is because somebody on one of the facebook groups was asking if anyone had their one they always regretted selling it 20 years ago or something like that uh, in glasgow and uh, so if you have one of these and you're in glasgow then there's somebody looking for it they'll probably buy it back off you if you want to i wouldn't sell it but th this one came from down to south somewhere so it's unlikely it's the same one um yeah so i don't actually have videos for quite a, I, did, I looked through my videos to see if i had a video of this i don't think i've got a video for this it's in one of my videos where it's like I was doing like all the Aria guitars I had, but I didn't wasn't actually playing them. Um, the problem was that my mic never used to be able to pick up bass at all, so there really was no way of doing bass demos um, at all. I could show you, but I couldn't like hear it. Whereas now I've got my Snowball mic and it it does do it. I have to. This is my second attempt doing the video because this thing, this P bass pickup thing, is a monster. It really is. So I'm playing through my new Marshall, which I'm so far I'm loving. Um, I even invested in new knobs for it. If you want proper Marshall knobs, or they're not, they're copies. There's a guy in South Shields on eBay selling them, and uh, they've got like a wee grub screw in the bottom, so they fit on either the knurled shaft or the sort of D-shaped shaft, which is what this is. I think it was three quid for two, um, and the postage stayed the same, so I bought six, I think it came to 7 50 or something like that, so, aye, so it's like one pound something, something each, which I didn't think was too bad. I was sitting there trying to be Try to be cheap, you know. I was going to buy two there because I had uh, I've had a couple of chicken head knobs. The problem with the chicken head knobs is they actually touched each other when because the knobs are too close together, which you can't see because I've got the bass in the way. The knobs are just slightly too close together. So if you had them both at the right angle at a certain point, they would sort of they would touch. So if you wanted to, you know, if you were in that position, you wanted to turn the treble down, you had to turn the bass up, turn it down, and then to get it passed. Um, and I was going to leave two of them, and I had to. I've got two of the original knobs, which are the same as these gold ones, apart from their, uh, they've got a sort of brass coloured front on them. I was thinking I could just buy four, but then I would have two different colours. So I splashed out and went for the whole seven pound fifty bottle six. Um, so I'll run this this base. So the electrics in this were goose. The pots were plastic. I don't know where they got the pots. I think I've seen somebody complaining about this era of guitar before. Uh, the actual parts of the pot were plastic. So it's a blend pot, which was not the same as the other ones. The blend pot still worked. So it's still in there, but the two volume controls and the tone control I had to go into and change because I don't, the other didn't work or they spun or whatever it was. They were they were physically broken. So what we've got is got a, pick, a volume control for the P bass pickup, a volume control for the jazz bass pickup, a master tone and a blend control. So it's all the way this way, it's the P bass, and all the way that way, it's the jazz bass. I was going to put a coil split in on this. In fact, actually, I think when I, I dug this out, um, I'd actually put a, I don't still have it in here, I did have a, a push pull pot in it to do that, but the way they're wired, they're wired in series, but they're wired this one going into this one, going into this one, going into this one, so you can't really split them. I was hoping it would be, you know, this one into this one, into this one, into this one, and then if you split it, you would get a normal P bass sound. But you don't, you don't need that. It's got enough thing there. Anyway, so obviously you've got extremely bassy, and then a jazz bass pickup and a blend between them, so you should be able to get any sound you want anyway, just by messed about with the volumes. Um. Yeah, so this is this is a jazz bass pickup. That might not 
seem to be up very loud. That's because it's not. Because the P bass pickup's so bloody loud. <laughs> Which actually, I mean, to be honest, if you were stuck, if the other pickup broke and you were stuck with the jazz bass pickup, I could still, still get away with it. These strings are probably 20 years old. Sort of deadness to them. It sounds alright when you plug through the amp, but when you're playing it not plugged in, they just sound like very old. Yeah, so that's the jazz bass pickup. I'm going to turn on to the P bass pickup, I'll probably just turn the volume down a bit. again which is there's something in that wall rattling um, I used to, I was getting it before with the, the wee stag amp and then when I turned on when I brought in this amp it seemed to not do it anymore but now it's back with a vengeance that you can hear it there it seems to be I spent forever trying to I spent the last half hour trying to listen see if it's one of the guitars rattling or thing I think it seems to be something within the wall I don't know so basically Sympathetic vibration. Ah, just doing my head in. I don't know how much it's coming through on the the mic. Uh, I think to listen to the bass, you really want to be listening to this um, on headphones or through bigger speakers rather than when I, I was listening to it on my uh, laptop and basses don't really come through whereas if I've got it through the headphone socket into my stereo then it sounds it sounds like you're here. That was why I did I'm doing these videos without doing um, there's no processing or shit going on it's basically just a mic straight in that's it. That's it. No editing either obviously that's why I make so many mistakes and stuff but uh, I kind of like it that way
my god, does the jazz bass sound, the jazz bass pickup sound trebly when you've been using that mud mud bucker or whatever you want to call it? <laughs> This is what you got the idea. If you look back at my Buckmaster basses, one I did a one at least I've done at least another bass, but it was like a P bass, and I stuck two P bass pickups in it um, with a switch that turned them on, turned or turned on the second one, and it, similar because this thing it really does work. It just gives you a pure super mega a mega pickup. Maybe not quite EBO, even more so. It's much more powerful than what the EBO does. I'm not a big one for having lots of pickups in a bass. Um, I know it sounds mad with all the, the crazy guitars that I do with 50 sounds and 100 sounds and all this stupid stuff, but something about a bass, I, I just like a P bass. It's got a P bass pickup, a volume, and a tone. And I never even used to touch the tone until I joined the Black Sabbath band. I realised that if you've got too much tone, then it doesn't quite work the same way. Um, it really makes you stick out in the mix when you get the tone up. But when you turn it down, it means I can be louder, so I'm just like, a big wall. The way it's, it, it works really well with Sabbath. I'm going to try. I think if, I think maybe the first time I ever went into the studio with Sabbath, I took this bass in. But that was when it was a little bit buzzy, and it was still working fine. But now, now it's good. controls and the blend control you can get just a standard P bass sound which is what I kind of always I always want. You just need to, you need to fiddle, fiddle a bit to get it. I mean, some buttons on the amp there's a so that's it on full bass pickup no tone control then i've got the volume down at half the gain at half of the volume at half but if i turn the bass up i've no idea whether the mic's picking that up but really that is floor shaking feel that through my, I can't really hear it, you can feel it in my chest. working I know what it's meant to do um, I can't decide whether I want it on or not but tomorrow I'm going to try that bass out in the the studio with after the end with Sabbath band um, and if it's if I can gig with that that'll be smashing because although it doesn't although it still weighs an absolute bastard it's not as big as the monster which will be getting used for a uh, headline gigs with the next couple of gigs we've got um, I probably do a wee bit of advertising we're playing on the 21st of February with a band called The Last Alibi in Audio, which is uh, in below the um, Central Station, where the Arches is. 
in there. So we're playing a support slot in there. And then on the 18th of April, we're supporting the Foo Fighters, which is spelt funny. So it's not it's not Dave Grohl. It's like a, a Foo Fighters tribute band. Or I don't think that one's actually been announced yet. So I, I shouldn't really be announcing that. Um, but I've not, I've not told you where it is. And I didn't tell you what, what, what date it was either. So we'll maybe have a gig supporting a band called the Foo Fighters at some point. Maybe. I don't know. It's not been confirmed. So it has. Right. Um... Yeah, so hopefully if I can, if, if I'm playing like you know a half hour set or something like that, be smashing if I could use that. Um, it really would be. Um, I don't know. This is kind of, I kind of like the idea of having one that's a bit more fling about. Um, and as I said, even though it's, so if I was even if I was just running, you have to take the fifteen inch cab and the, the four hundred watt. And uh, but the problem is that to get the, this into the panda, I have to take the back seats out. It's only four bolts. So it's not that difficult. But that fits in the back of the panda without having to take the seats out. That only misses by that much. Uh, so I can actually get the whole thing in the panda. So that was why I bought another panda rather than another type of small car. Just because I knew that because it's a postman Pat's van, shape-wise, it takes stuff like that. So I can actually get both of them into the back of it. Uh, but that fits in without having to do that. Another thing, I, I, would, I, I tried to do a video earlier on and failed at dinner time. Um, then I dug this out and fixed it up and had to sort some frets and stuff. It's playing amazing. I can't. I already can't remember what it was I said in this video. So if I'm doubling myself, I'm sorry, but I did a video. Well, it's now 16 minutes, 17 minutes in. So 20 minutes ago, I did a video that was a. Uh, I talked some shit and it was just farty, farty. I had to turn the, the mic down. I hope it's not. I hope it's worked this time. Um, I turned the app down a bit as well. It was just overloading everything. You couldn't hear anything. But the point of that video was is just like how good basses are, and if you play the guitar, fair enough. If you've got like two guitars, like a, you know a guitar, an electric guitar, and an acoustic guitar, I can forgive you for not having a bass. But if you've got sort of four guitars, you should have a bass, even if you're not using it for recording. Just having it playing the bass is great fun, and it's like if you can learn, apply everything you can with the guitar and play the bass. There's things you can do the bass you can't do in a guitar, and it's like I mean, it's amazing just how. I remember the first band I was in. It was the, the band were much better than I was. It was a guitar and drummer, and it was like they'd sit there and playing this complicated riff coming in. You know, then I was playing well, just with that, and that was just wow. And it's just it feels amazing. It's so good. You can, you can do so much with so little on the bass. Just getting it, you know, just at the right moment. And it's so amazing as long as you hit it exactly the right time, and you can really drive things. And it's just great fun to play them. And it makes you it makes you understand drummers an awful lot more. I'm noticing that in the Cranking House band. I'm but I'm playing guitar and that, but because I'm a bass player, I'm able to play with a lot it's normally the bass player and the drummer are their own wee sort of world where it's, they deal with that and then it's kinda of, it's like that in the Black Sabbath band. It's me and, me and the drummer, you know what I mean? We are the we're the team, and then you get like a singer and a guitarist. Not, not that we don't get on with them, they're lovely, but it's like, it's like, it's like me and him against the world, do you know what I mean? Because it's, we're the rhythm section. We, we do things that the others wouldn't understand. Whereas in Cranking House, because I know how to play with the drums, because my bass player, even though I'm playing guitar in that band, I don't feel, I don't think it's quite that way around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it was just, just us three as the musicians, and you get the singer who's like, he's just the singer. <laughs> Sorry, Pat, if you're watching that. I don't mean that in a, in a nasty way at all, it's just the way things happen. Um, partly because I don't understand I don't understand how you can be a singer well I'd love to be able to be a singer and it's amazing having a singer who, who just sings it's dead I mean a, a total you take some amount of balls to stand there without hiding behind a guitar I mean I can sing sort of well no, I can't sing but I'm willing to try singing I don't mind standing up in front of folk and singing you know if I play the bass or playing the guitar because then the more important thing is I'm playing the music and then the singing to be add on but if you're just doing the singing you really need to concentrate on it um, I think pretty much all the best singers I don't know if there's are there really any pure amazing singers or like the best in the world that actually do play the guitar at the same time because it, it does limit you I think by the bass at the same time yeah so this is one for the collection it's not getting sold um, if you do have 
one of these that you've got in Glasgow you're looking to get rid of, there's somebody looking for it right now. I heard at one point, somebody told me that there was one of these hanging up in in Glasgow. I don't think it was Victor Morris. Like it was a shop I hadn't heard of, but I don't think it's been there for years. But it was on the wall for like 10 years. Nobody bought it. You know, it, was, it was just this this guy I remember has been at school or college or whatever it was, and every time he went in, there was just one of these bases hanging on the wall. I can't remember when I got told that or who it was that told me that, but I kind of believe it. It's the sort of thing that I can imagine this was, it might not have been a cheap base. Um, and I can especially imagine this being relatively popular in 1987, right up till about 1991, 92, when, you know, pointy head, super strap was what everyone had. And then by the time I sort of got into guitars, which is maybe, I didn't really start playing at this point, but just looking at them and something like this would not have appealed to me and when I was starting off, you know, playing in like, you know, playing Stone songs and Beatles songs and Led Zeppelin and stuff, you just, the pointy headstock was just the thing you just did not. I love any guitar that doesn't have a pointy headstock, but I kind of like it. It goes well with this bass. I'm a great one for not really liking the shapes of most basses. Most basses are pretty ugly. There's a few that kind of stick out and this is basically just a P bass. It's a little bit, it's a little bit pointier than a P bass and then it's got the, the pointy headstock on it. I think this with a like a fender type neck on it would sell hundreds of folk would want this if that was the case. But it, because the pointy head just gives it that Jackson y no, it's Aria Pro, so it's not as it's not as good as Jackson, even though I'm pretty sure it is. But if I've got a good a good sound, which to be fair I did, I had with the wee stag, wee stag bass amp as well. It's just as nice when you when I've got a new one, it's giving me a new impetus to play, and I'm really enjoying just not playing anything in particular, just messing about. Oh, I do have some. I've got a song to learn for tomorrow actually. Um, wing it the first time we played it um I, I just winged it <laughs> and it's it sounded pretty good and the other guys were best I didn't how do you know how to play that song it's like I was just winging it I can't really I don't really know there's not much to it That's what I'll do while this video is uploading. I shall work out how to play the wizard. I'm tempted to take this into the studio tomorrow because I'm actually really enjoying playing it. But I've got too many bases that I've not yet tried out. I'm still going for, I think I've been in the band for what, six months now? I don't think I've taken the same bass in twice. Or I've maybe taken, I think I've taken Scavenger in a couple of times when we were rehearsing for the first gig. But I mean, I still turn up with a new one every second week anyway, which is which is always fun. It's now got to the same in the Kraken House band. They're just bored now. I took in the Badger last night, and then it's like you know, there's, there's a point halfway through when someone just goes, "Ah, so Malcolm, what guitars that you've got today?" <laughs> there's a oh, well, this this is, and then I'll talk about it for five minutes. But um, they're well bored. <laughs> it's like, and then I think they're, they're maybe assuming I'm going to run out soon. It's just not going to happen. Not yet. So. Rock and roll. Catch you all later. Oh, and, uh, I forgot to say, um, if you ever get bored of me talking, stick on the subtitles. It's hilarious. Uh, it really is. I've not done it for a while. I assume they're still as bad as they were before. But I mean, if you're struggling to understand the Glasgow accent, you think, oh, 
I wouldn't put the subtitles on to help me through it. It's just like the things that it says I'm talking about are absolute madness. You know, total deranged stuff that's got absolutely no, none of the words are, are anything like what I've said. Great fun. Rock and roll. Uh, 